How to effectively close with the enemy is one of the most fundamental basic techniques you can learn as an infantryman. In this episode of Infantryman's Guide, we're going to be looking at individual movement techniques, or IMTs. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment. Proper movement on the battlefield is essential to the ability to close with and destroy the enemy. Where and how you move can mean the difference between life and death and mission accomplishment. A near-peer threat is well-equipped and very capable force with equivalent small arms of rifles, light and medium machine guns, RPGs, anti-personnel mines, and indirect fire weapons like grenade launchers and mortars. To help enable us to maneuver on the battlefield and minimize the threats these weapons pose, we will cover four different individual movement techniques, or IMTs for short. But before we get to that, we must know the difference between cover and concealment. Cover is anything that will provide a degree of protection from enemy fire. This can be man-made features such as dug-in fighting positions, buildings and walls, to natural cover such as microterrain. Concealment is anything that adds in obscuring the enemy's ability to observe you. It doesn't necessarily provide any type of actual protection from incoming enemy fire. Examples of this would be dense vegetation and tall grass. When selecting positions to both maneuver against and engage the enemy, it's always ideal to try to find positions and avenues of travel that offer both cover and concealment. However, the battlefield is a very dynamic environment, and the ideal conditions are rarely present. Thus, every individual warfighter needs to employ certain movement techniques depending on the conditions faced. The first movement technique we are going to talk about is called the low crawl. Low crawl gives you the lowest possible silhouette. Use it to cross places where the cover and or concealment is very low and enemy fire and observation prevents you from getting up. The idea for the low crawl is to keep your body as flat as possible. Ensuring that your weapon is unsafe and the ejection port cover is closed, grab the upper sling swivel of your weapon and let the handguard rest on your forearm. Injection port cover towards the sky. The butt of the weapon will drag on the ground and trail alongside you as you move. This helps keep the muzzle off the ground, ensuring that your rifle stays functional for when that moment arises that you need to use it. Push both arms forward and pull one leg up. Move forward by pulling with your arms and pushing with your forward leg simultaneously. You only use one leg during this movement. Your other leg will trail flat behind you. Continue this push-pull movement until you have reached your intended destination. Remember to stay as flat and low as possible during this. You're using this technique for a reason, and that is that the enemy has good visibility on the area you're moving through and likely has a crew served machine gun covering it. If so, you're going to be encountering grazing fire, which means that their cone of fire is typically going to rise no higher than 1.8 meters off the ground, the average height of a man. The simple act of carelessly raising your head up to see where you're going gets you killed. Look forward. Bend at the neck, keeping the side of your helmet on the ground. Lastly, if your dominant leg that you're pushing with starts to get tired, simply switch over to the opposite side. The next movement technique we're going to talk about is the high crawl. The high crawl lets you move faster than the low crawl and still gives you a low silhouette. Use this crawl when there is good concealment, but the enemy's fire prevents you from getting up. To high crawl, keep your torso off the ground and the rest of your weight is on your forearms and lower legs or your elbows and your knees. Ensuring that your weapon is unsafe and the ejection port cover is closed, cradle your weapon in your arms, keeping the muzzle off the ground. Keep your knees behind your ass so your ass stays low. Move forward with your right elbow and left knee, then follow with your left elbow and right knee. There are a couple different ways you can hold your weapon when performing the high crawl. One is the standard cradle method seen here. Next is modified port arms holding either the pistol grip or the buttstock of the weapon. Lastly is a one-handed method, often referred to as the commando crawl. This keeps the weapon oriented downrange towards the direction of movement. The next technique we will discuss is the back crawl. This will be used to crawl under water obstacles that the enemy sets up on the battlefield or around his defensive positions. First, upon coming to the wire obstacle, observe if there's any booby traps or noise making devices attached to the wire. Next, to crawl under the wire obstacle, slide head first onto your back. You can rest the muzzle of the weapon on your helmet. Use your weapon to push the wire away from your body. Grasp the hand guards, palm up. Feel ahead with your free hand to find the next strand of wire and any trip wires or mines. 
Do not pull yourself through by tugging on the wire. It may be booby trapped. Push forward with your heels and keep your head slightly off the deck so that you're not pushing dirt with your Kevlar. Wiggle your shoulders to assist with movement. Keep the wire from snagging on your clothes and equipment. Let it slide along your weapon as you move through. The last technique that we're going to cover is rushing, also known as the 3-5 to five second rush. As the name implies, this movement technique offers you the fastest movement with the least protection, exposing you for a brief period of time to the enemy. Rushes are kept short to keep the enemy riflemen or machine gunners from tracking you. Always try to hit the ground behind some cover. If you hit the deck in the open, you are only presenting the enemy with an easy stationary target. So if you come up short, crawl to the nearest covered and concealed position. Also, rushes must be coordinated with your battle buddy. No one must rush without cover fire. Remember this phrase, fire without movement is a waste of ammo. Movement without fire is suicide. To rush from your prone firing position, raise your head to pick out your next firing position that offers the most cover and concealment and the best route to it. After selecting that position, push up with your arms, spring your feet, holding your weapon at the ready. If you have been firing from a certain position for some time, you may also roll and crawl away from your firing position in order to confuse the enemy who may be tracking where you had been shooting from. Run to your next position, keeping your exposure time to the enemy observation to no more than 3 to 5 seconds. A good ditty to say in your head is, I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. Speed and surprise are your friend here. To get back on the ground into a prone firing position, you can use any one of the following techniques. I'm gonna run up, I'm gonna plant both feet, I'm gonna transition this hand down to the lower end of the buttstock, grabbing it. I'm gonna fall to my knees, and as I fall forward, I'm gonna drive that buttstock in the ground to break my fall. Now I'm gonna fall to my support side. Once I've done that, I'm gonna roll back over, transition that buttstock into my shoulder, aim in. Next technique is called the point post sprawl technique. Same as last time, I'm gonna run up, I'm going to plant both feet, I'm going to drop to my knees, except this time instead of driving the buttstock into the ground, I'm going to point my weapon, I'm going to post my support hand, and then I'm going to sprawl, bringing myself down into a firing position. Alright, last technique, I'm going to run up, I'm going to plant both feet, I'm going to drop to my knees. This time I'm going to take my hand and forearm and use it as to break my fall. And then I'm going to slide into it, like this. And then I'm going to roll back over into a firing position. Well, that's it guys. That completes this video over Infantryman's Guide on Individual Movement Techniques, or IMTs. If you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to check out my channel and subscribe. I've already done several infantry related videos and plan on doing several more in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment.